All right, hello my friends, and welcome back to another Brotato tier list or guide. Today I'm covering the single most common question that I've gotten since I have started making these guides, and that's what order should I unlock the items in, or what order should I play the characters in? Of course, when you win with a character, you unlock an item, and that item can either improve or make your shop worse by adding it to the pool. So what order you unlock the items in actually has quite a bit of impact on how easy it is or how difficult it is for you to finish winning with all the classes, get wins on Danger 5, win in challenge modes, and so on. Hope you're enjoying the word art, but we're moving on from it now because we're going to go into quite a little bit of detail about which characters you should win with first, what those items do in terms of impacting your shop, and why. So I'm going to start with a couple general tips or rules for how you should think about unlocking items. So first off, this guide is going to be focusing in on unlocking items for Danger 5 runs. For specific challenge runs, modded runs, or endless runs, you will need to focus on items a little bit differently. A couple things to think about when you're unlocking items. First off, any item that unlocks at a lower level is much more impactful than a higher level one. And impactful can be good or bad. If a level one item makes your shop worse, it makes it much worse than an equivalently bad level four item because it shows up that much more frequently. But on the other hand, if it makes your shop better, it makes it much, much better than the equivalent level four item because it shows up that much more frequently. So in general, the impact of an item is going to be highly tied to its rarity. You should also probably unlock a class's item before trying it on Danger 5, especially if you've been having some trouble um, with that class. Usually the class's item has special synergy with the... The, the item that a class unlocks has special synergy with that class. Not always, but typically that's the case, so it's a good rule of thumb. Another thing to keep in mind is that Unlocking weapons, so the classes that unlock weapons, inherently makes your shop worse. This is because Brotato typically wants you to get six weapons that are exactly the same, or weapons from a similar synergy tag, and so adding more weapons to the pool makes that goal harder. A good way to think about this, or a good example, is that a lot of builds revolve around getting six slingshots. So if you add any weapons to your pool, it makes it harder to get six slingshots, it makes it harder to upgrade those slingshots. This is especially true if you add primitive weapons or ranged weapons to your pool, because those will show up much more frequently, and make it significantly less likely for you to get those slingshots that are the goal for your build. Conversely, an item just has to be better than the median item for that tier in order for it to be good to unlock. So any item at 51% or higher is going to improve your shop overall. It's technically slightly worse to have a larger shop just because of how deck building games work in general. You usually want to have the most powerful things show up more frequently because you just ignore the worst things. So a theoretical median item would be a bad thing to unlock. Generally speaking, you want more options in Brotato though, so unlocking additional items is typically good. Um, but the the math works out such that you should keep in mind that the more items you add to the shop, the less you're going to see the really high tier items, and so the overall worse your shop is going to become. But if you're adding items that improve the average pull from the shop, then you're still going to be improving it. And finally, uh, I do say that you should be avoiding some items or that they should make your that they make your shop worse. Uh, I guess this isn't legal advice. You should unlock all the items anyways because the game is fun to play. But if you were building a theoretical account to go for world record runs or really difficult challenge runs or something, then you would probably avoid ever winning with some characters on that account to make sure that that account had the the best possible shop available. I also, saying that that wasn't legal advice, reminded me that I had somebody search up my saver video using the search term financial advice, and to that person I want to just quickly say, you shouldn't take financial advice that you find on YouTube, that's my financial advice for you, especially not on the YouTube, on a YouTube that covers Brotato class guides. Alright, so, without further ado, let us get into which characters you should unlock very first. So these 
five characters, I think, are the, going to be the ones that impact your shop the most. They have the most important unlockables, and this is either because these items are so good that they will win a run by yourself, or because they enable an entire category of strategies on their own. These characters are the Sick, the Fisherman, the Renegade, the Masochist, and the Speedy. If you want to pull up exact stats for these items, you can grab that on the wiki, but I will talk about why each of these items is so good and why you should look to unlock it first. The Sick is the best. You should get this probably first of all, because the whetstone is such an efficient way to build lifesteal, and the initial shop actually doesn't have great ways to build lifesteal, that adding the whetstone to your pool enables lifesteal as a healing method for your character by itself. It's also a level 2 item, which means it shows up very frequently, so it has a high impact and an extremely high positive uh, change to your shop. The lure is just a great item, it's huge economy, so the fisherman just improves your shop a lot, it's an S tier item that you're always going to grab. The renegade unlocks the fairy, which by itself will usually give you something like 20 HP regeneration. Whenever the fairy shows up, it solves all of your healing problems by itself, so you're basically adding one item to your pool that will pay for something like five, ten other items all by itself. If you were building regeneration items, you'd have to continuously buy regeneration, but if you just find fairy, then you can stop buying regeneration in most runs, and so this one item will usually cost you like a hundred materials and be worth something like a thousand materials over the course of your run. It's incredibly efficient. Speedy is an interesting one because it's a tier 3 item, and I mentioned that tier 3 items are less impactful than tier 2 items, and it's not going to win the run by itself to unlock the fin, but fin is an extremely efficient item, and what it does do is add another way to boost your speed to the shop. The initial shop is actually significantly lacking in ways to boost speed, and that's actually an incredibly difficult problem for characters to solve when they don't have access to speed increase items. So any item that you can unlock that gives you another option to increase your character's speed is going to make it much, much easier both to increase your speed, which is really important in Rotato, but also to afford items that decrease your speed, of which there are several really good ones, notably stuff like Bag that gives you a minus 1% speed. You can buy, you could, I guess, if the game would let you, buy 10 bags and counteract that speed with the 10% speed boost from Finn. It also gives you 3% lifesteal, which is really nice. Masochist is an interesting one here because the spiked shield is a weapon, and I already mentioned that unlocking weapons is inherently bad, but the spiked shield, unlike many of the other weapon unlocks, is best in slot for many characters, and so unlocking it is going to allow you to win with those characters. It also, because it has the blunt and medieval tags, doesn't compete with other best in slot weapons. At level 1, there are, I think, no other medieval or blunt weapons that are best in slot for pretty much any character. And so the spike shield is never going to compete with other synergy tags that you are trying to build or overlap with synergy tags from other weapons that you're trying to build and stop you from finding those weapons. It still will sometimes show up when you don't want it, but between the fact that it's best in slot for many characters, uh, notably the golem, the king, several others, um, and the fact that it will rarely compete with an item you're trying to build, I think unlocking the massive kist and getting access to the spike shield early is going to help you build into uh, the optimal strategy for many characters. So these are the five characters that you should grab first. Next, I've separated it out into four more categories. Characters whose item unlocks significantly improve your shop, Characters whose item unlocks slightly improve your shop, but mostly won't have an impact. Characters whose item unlocks are slightly negative for your shop. And characters that you should really strive to avoid if you're trying to optimize an account. So we're going to go through those in order. Let's talk about the ones that are large improvements. You'll notice that there's a lot of these, and one thing that Brotato I think does pretty well is that most of the unlockable items are over or significantly over median, and so it's usually good to unlock 
items. Um, it would feel pretty bad, I think, in this game if, as you played the game, your shop got significantly worse. And so one thing that I should mention is that a fully unlocked shop is better than the starting shop. Not by much, but it is it is better to have all the items unlocked than to not have all the items, than to have zero of the items unlocked if that were a binary. But the best state your shop will be in is after you unlock all the items on the previous page and the ones on this page. And then you can continue to slightly improve it with the ones on the next page. But for the most part, uh, at that point, the impact is going to be fairly low. I will briefly talk about each of these items. So one that I want to, to mention is the ghost and ritual. This is a really good item and one that a lot of people recommend unlocking very early. I, I think this could very easily be the first one you unlock on this page and it would be really good. It's a very high impact item to unlock because it's tier two, but I've put it in large improvement rather than in S tier because there are times that you'll skip it. Um, that said, those times are few and far between, so Ritual is gonna be really nice. For the other unlocks, you will notice that there are two weapons on this list, Obliterator and Nuclear Launcher. The reason for this is that these are the two weapons that when you find them, they will often just win the run totally on their own. Um, if you happen to be building damage that synergizes with either of these weapons, having those unlocked is a pretty solid advantage because it gives you a small chance, since they're tier three or four weapons only, but a chance to just have your run sort of solved by itself. If you remember when I talked about the fairy, this is kind of the same principle. I think the fairy is more powerful and more generally applicable. Like melee characters won't want the obliterator or the nuclear launcher, but every character wants the fairy pretty much. That it's a similar principle where unlocking those items will just win by itself. There's another couple of items that are just really efficient. So community support from the streamer, the bowler hat from the entrepreneur, and the stone skin from the golem are tier three items that are all really efficient. Um, and the, the lucky charm from the lucky. These just provide really good stats and are significantly over the median point for their tier. So these are going to lard be a, a significantly high improvement for your shop. I think I have listed all of these in A or S tier in my item tier list. Um, similarly, the wheat from the farmer. These are all at tier three. There's another couple of items that are sort of in a category on their own, and that is the hunting trophy and the tentacle. Basically, unlocking these allows you to build precise builds or critical hit strike, uh, critical strike. Critical strike is pretty inefficient in general in Brotato until you have access to these two items, which give you significant benefits for unlocking the, for, for building critical hit. And so you can have a whole extra category of builds available to you if you unlock the Lich and the Speedy. So if you want to build critical hit builds, then these two items are really important and you should unlock them early. Um, this is also good because it allows you to make use of other efficient items. Something like the, uh, I'm blanking on the name of it, but it gives you plus 10% crit chance for minus one armor. That's a really powerful and very efficient item at, at tier two and having the supporting tools to make use of that efficient item is going to be really good for your shops overall. It will let you more often buy more important items. Finally, there's the two tier two items that I have in this list, or the three tier two items that I have in this list, but the ones that I haven't mentioned already, the snail and the compass. Compass, like I talked about, is really good just because adding speed to your shop is really important. Um, and Snail effectively adds speed to your shop, but it, it decreases your speed but slows the enemies, which is actually better than increasing speed because if you slow both you and the enemies, it makes it easier to dodge. Your reaction times don't have to be as quick. Your positioning can be less precise. Um, so Snail is just generally a great item that you'll buy most of the time you see it. Compass is really important for the same reason that I talked about Finn, but because Compass has more downsides and um, you will skip it more often than you will Finn, I think it is, I'm putting it under this category rather than under the S tier category. I think if you were to move to move some items up to S tier, it would probably be Compass and Ritual. Um, those are the ones that are probably the most powerful on this page, but what order you unlock these in is more or less up to you. 
Finally, I should mention the Anvil, which is a tier 4 item, the only one that appears on this list, but it's so good that having it in your shop is just a really large improvement to the quality of your shop. Next, items that slightly improve your shop. These are mostly going to be either items that are not super efficient, or uh, that, that are efficient but high level, or items that are only slightly better than average. So m you will see there's a lot of tier 4 items on this list. You've got the panda, the robot arm, the giant's belt, the potato, the octopus, and so on, uh, the medical kit. These are all tier 4 items that are really good, but they're tier 4, so the amount of times that they show up is not going to wildly improve your shop. You'll notice that like, I have the potato, which I placed in S tier in my item tier list on the slightly positive list. That's just because it's only a tier 4 item, and so, or because it's a tier 4 item, so it's only going to show up every few runs, and the amount that it's better than other tier 4 items is significant, but not enormous, so it's not going to wildly tilt your shop in and of itself. The only reason Anvil scraped in on the previous slide is that Anvil will sometimes just win the run all by itself. Most of these items will not do that. Next up, I've got uh, Focus and Improved Tools. These are both items that are better than average, but sort of inefficient to buy. You'll skip them a lot. Um, improved Tools, obviously, is really important if you're going for any engineering build, but it is a fairly inefficient way to buy attack speed on other builds. You'll still sometimes buy it on other builds because it has no downsides, and Focus, similarly, is going to be uh, typically very good, but not so much better than the other Tier 3 items that it wildly improves your shop. Finally, the Power Fist, I think, is a good weapon that you do want to have access to in the pool. You will often replace other melee weapons with it because it, it's just a very solid weapon. But like I talked about, weapons are inherently bad to unlock. And so often, you're go often enough, you're going to skip this weapon that you will want to save the Brawler until a little bit later. But I think it does make your shop slightly better to have. All right. So that's all of the, the ones that you should focus on early. Later on, you are going to start unlocking characters that make your shop worse. Most of these are not going to have a huge impact on your shop or make it significantly worse, but there will be a few we'll talk about at the end that do significantly decrease the quality of your shop. Let's talk about the slightly negative characters. So some of these are items like explosive bullets, big arms, and... Night Vision Goggles that I think, or Gnome, that I think are significantly worse than the median for that tier. Uh, Gnome, especially Big Arms as well. Night Vision Goggles is kind of interesting because it's a very good way to buy critical hit chance, but typically by the time you're tier 4, if you want critical hit chance, you don't always want to buy the Night Vision Goggles because you'll, you'll just want to buy cheaper items. It's only 50% more efficient than the 10% crit item, so it's not like, which is a tier 2 item, so it's not like it's going to be insanely better than tier 2 items. It ends up being a materials inefficient way to buy crit chance a lot. Um, and then these other tier 4 items I think are just worse than the median for their tier. Not that they're necessarily bad items, and many of these I've placed in B or C tiers, even A tier I think, for the spider on my tier list, but they are worse than the median for that tier. And so even if they're items that you're, you're usually going to buy when you see them, that's at the opportunity cost of seeing a better item for that tier. And so it's going to slightly decrease the quality of the shop. A concept that I think is really important when you're looking at unlock order, and this is true generally in deck building games, is that the opportunity cost of drawing one card is always not drawing a different card at minimum and so you can think about that as when you are increasing your shop as always making it harder to find your best cards so if you are adding in stuff like this that is slightly worse or even okay but not amazing compared to other items of its tier then you are decreasing the quality of your shop and if you think about it like when would you rather roll a gnome than a potato usually you'd rather have the potato. So 
adding in the gnome to the pool means that many fewer potatoes that you're going to grab. For lower tier items, it's typically going to just be cost inefficient or situational items. Rip and Tear is a really strong item when you can use it, but there's so many character builds that can't use it that it, I think, is slightly worse to have it unlocked than normal. And Spicy Sauce is an item that you're actually going to buy most of the time you see it, I think, because it doesn't have downsides. But it's a very cost inefficient item. It doesn't do a whole lot for the price that you pay for it, and so it is generally going to be a negative to have it in your pool. Even with no downsides, it gives you three, mostly just three HP. The pickup, the explosion on pickup is typically not going to matter for your damage output. And so spicy sauce, while you'll pick it, anytime you roll it in a crate, you'll, you'll never turn it down. And you will a decent amount of the time buy it in the shop you would typically rather roll a different tier two item than this one because it's so uh, cost inefficient to purchase. For these weapons, again, these are all good weapons that you're going to buy a reasonable amount of the time, but because you will typically be wanting to generate six of the same weapon, you have to weigh having these weapons in the pool against having a tier three or four weapon of just the normal kind that you're trying to build. How often are you rather going to roll a Thunder Sword than just a tier three melee weapon of the kind that you're building? It's often gonna be better, but not, not often enough that you would like to add it to your pool. Um, similarly, Sniper Rifle, which is probably the best of these weapons, is sometimes it's gonna be better than the ranged weapons you have, but you're gonna skip it often enough that mostly it just makes your pool worse and overall, you would rather just have like another tier three slingshot show up in the shop almost every time when you're building a different kind of weapon. And finally, there are the weapons that you, the unlocks that you want to avoid adding. So these are, you'll notice that they are all weapons except for one. And one thing that they also have in common is they're all tier, is four of them are tier one weapons. Some of these are even good weapons. So, for example, I think the hatchet is a totally reasonable weapon. I think claws is an actively good weapon. I think fighting stick is pretty good. I think chopper is situational, but, but playable. Um, but for hatchet and fighting stick, these have the disadvantage of being tier one weapons with the primitive weapon tag. And primitive has some of the best weapons in the game. So when you are... When you add hatchet or fighting stick to your pool, that makes it less likely that you're finding slingshots or spears that you are typically wanting to build with the primitive weapon tag. Those are two of the best weapons in the game, and they also typically you want all six of the same of those weapons um, because of the way that slingshots work or the way that the range on spears interacts with other melee weapons. Spears outrange other melee weapons, so adding in shorter ranged weapons makes them worse, The or means that the spears are just going to obviate those melee weapons. Adding in additional weapons with the primitive weapon tag makes it harder to find those incredibly powerful weapons and makes your shop significantly worse. This is especially true for level one weapons because typically in the first two shops, you're going to want to hard roll when you're guaranteed to see two weapons show up in the shop. You're going to want to hard roll skipping everything that isn't one of the weapons that you are trying to build and adding in additional weapons that show up instead of those weapons makes it less likely for you to find six of the, the weapon that you're looking for in the shop. This is similarly true with Claw, which is going to interfere with finding six fists or six hands, which are really important for some builds. And Chopper is less important. It conflicts less with other weapons because there aren't a bunch of other blades that you are going to want to use. But it's also, I think, not best in slot for any character. So adding it into the pool just makes it makes your pool worse. Potato Launcher is just an actively bad weapon that you never want to see in the shop. So adding it to the pool, even at tier two, makes your shop significantly worse. And finally, padding is one of the worst items in the game. Um, 
really important for endless runs. So both potato launcher and padding are important to unlock for endless runs. But padding is one of the worst items in the game. Minus five speed is an enormous penalty and the bonus is practically non-existent for almost every character. Adding a tier two item that is always a dead slot to your pool is going to hugely negatively impact your shop. And you can think about Hatchet and Fighting Stick the same way, adding a dead slot to a certain number of shops. And these are going to show up really frequently because you're rolling for weapons in your tier one, in your wave two, three, four, and five shops. Adding in dead slots to those pools makes the average quality of your shop significantly worse. So just quickly to sum up, the characters that you want to do first are the Sick, Renegade, Fisherman, Masochist, and Speedy. And the characters you want to do last are the Chunky, Wildling, Multitasker, Apprentice, Cryptid, and Saver. Typically, you want to avoid adding weapons to your shop. I think that's the most important thing. And the better the items you add to your shop, the better. All right, my friends, hope that you have enjoyed this guide and that it helps you decide which characters to play in which order. As always, and of course, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I'm happy to answer them. I answer every comment that I get, for now at least. As the channel continues to grow, we'll see. And of course, if you found this video helpful, feel free to leave a like, subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game analysis. And I will catch you next time. Cheers, folks. GG.